Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. You better get me some assistance up here. 775, she's crashed. Hey, I just had a traffic accident. The uh, chain reaction accident occurred and... Accidents. Our worst nightmare. Behind the wheel of a car, they act stupid. It can happen to any of us. Traffic accidents strike without warning, but not without reason. In the next 60 minutes, we're going to look at the accidents. And we're going to look at the reasons. We're a society of risk takers. Then we're going to look at what you can do to drive smart. What you are about to see is terrifying. It comes as a frightening lesson to each of us. You will see actual footage from police and news cameras, much of it never before seen. Accidents happen to everybody. No one is immune. But if you know how they occur, when they are most likely to occur, and what to do if they can't be avoided, then you can begin to drive smart. Because accidents can happen to good people or bad people. I'll put a bullet in your head! To people who drive a little or drive a lot. But they don't happen as often to people who drive smart. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. In 25 years of police work, I've seen the tragedy and heartbreak of traffic accidents. And the saddest thing is that most of these accidents could have been avoided. In the next hour, we'll show you what I've seen and learned from bitter experience. So buckle up. We're going to save your life. We begin with one of the fiercest hazards to our driving. Bad weather. Wet roads and icy intersections may be easy to spot but still impossible to negotiate. You know the place, that curve that becomes a death trap whenever the weather goes bad. Yet we fall for it time and time again. Here in St. Paul, two home video cameramen call the play-by-play -play at an icy intersection. Every car that's coming over the hill here is hitting this car. It would have ran your movie over. This five-ton truck goes into a slide and narrowly misses a pedestrian. Look out! Oh. Then slides right through a red light. The pedestrian starts across the street again without looking. Oh, there goes another! Watch it, dude! Yeah, he jumps clear. Whoa, that's an accident but cross traffic never stood a chance. Even more frightening is the weather hazard you can't see coming, wind. This Jeep is pulling a camper through a rolling hillside and suddenly the camper is pulling him, whipping him upside down. The exhaust shows the full force of the gale. These people are lucky to get out alive. The video indicates the driver was over the speed limit for a vehicle with a trailer. The broad side of the camper acts like a sail. And when the crosswind sends it airborne, the Jeep has no choice but to follow. In Ohio, no one wants to follow this car. He loses control down a snowy slope, gets a sidewalk, rolls over a street sign, skids into a parked car, bounces back across the street and over another sign then off another parked car, and finally comes to rest against a building. We're coming off that hill. Uh, Try to stop. She was just like a sheet of ice. Kept sliding. Thankfully, there were no pedestrians in his path. In severe weather, do stay in the center lane to avoid rain and ice that collects at the curbside. Do allow two or three times your normal stopping distance. Don't ignore wind advisories. And the most important tip of all, in good weather or bad, always wear your seatbelt. Pile ups. All it takes is one car. And from there, it just gets worse. There was total fog, and all of a sudden, we could see a maze of cars in front of us. People driving entirely too fast in the fog. The visibility dropped very rapidly. The uh, chain reaction accident did occur at that point. Just the sight of all that mangled metal makes you want to quit driving and walk. 
but the fact remains that pileups occur on a regular basis. What starts them off? Out of all of the causes, fog hangs at the top of the list. Bottom line, if you can't see, how can you drive? This is Southern California. Visibility in dense fog can shrink instantly. Watch as it rolls in between the canyons. In seconds, you won't be able to see a car length ahead. For 15 vehicles, a glass shattering chain reaction. You couldn't see nothing on the fog. By the time we noticed the pile up, it was too late. In this weather, the road has an invisible layer of ice. Braking distance is doubled. You can't expect an 18-ton truck to stop on a dime. In Birmingham, England, this motorway looks like a war zone. As it so often happens, high speed coupled with a stopped car can set off a fiery chain reaction. The devastation is incredible. And it all starts with one car. Unless you see it as it happens, it just doesn't seem real. Here outside London, the roads are slippery from an earlier rain. Some drivers have their lights on, others don't. Mistake number one. They're also driving too fast and too close together. It's a prescription for a pileup. Watch carefully the lane on your left. As the white van brakes, the car behind him pulls up alongside. Suddenly, this red car swerves out of the way and spins out of control. Incredibly, he avoids an accident, but instigates what's to come. Keep watching. Now traffic must slow down. You would think the white truck in the middle lane would hit the brakes sooner. No such luck. He skids into the car in front of him. And now it's total mayhem, as glass flies and the crunch of metal on metal fills the air. But it isn't over yet. Behind the pileup, a semi-truck jackknife's trying to slow down. The truck blocks all the lanes. The cars behind it have nowhere to go, except one after another broadside into the truck. Over 50 cars take the hit. Total time for this catastrophe to unfold, 35 seconds. If only people would obey the signals that we do put on the motorway for their benefit, then a lot of this wouldn't have occurred. Sometimes, even when you think it's all over, it just keeps getting worse. Through a thick Louisiana fog, a news van slams into a tow truck. This is one news crew that has some explaining to do. A van is overturned on this rain-soaked Canadian freeway. This driver is watching the accident instead of the road and skids out. Another car driving way too fast for the conditions follows suit. In seconds, a third car does a complete 180 and bounces off the median. A pileup is virtually inevitable. Incredibly, the oncoming cars still don't slow down, and a motorist directing traffic narrowly escapes getting hit. Thick fog and slippery roads. It all constitutes the anatomy of a pileup. And although you can't control the weather, you can take responsibility for your driving. Slow down. Turn on the radio for traffic reports. If the roads are slick, Give yourself enough braking distance to stop without skidding. And if it's still impossible to avoid a pileup, stay in the car. It's more dangerous to get out against moving traffic. When the pileup stops, then get out and safely move to the shoulder nearest you. As a police officer, I see one kind of driving that's responsible for more accidents than anything else. Aggressive driving. This brown hatchback sneaks into the street before both directions are clear. The oncoming minivan gets knocked on its roof for 50 feet. Most of us are guilty of aggressive driving every now and then. We go a little faster when we're late. But some people do it all the time. They weave in and out of traffic, jockeying for position. They tailgate. They barrel down the curb lane. They think it's some kind of game, with extra points for creative shortcuts. But in reality, 
Aggressive driving kills. People who drive aggressively are more likely to overlook street signs with tragic results. Unsafe lane changes can become disastrous. And reaction time is cut significantly when an aggressive driver is tailgating. You might think you know all the tricks about driving fast in traffic, but trust me, if you're an aggressive driver, you're a dangerous driver. So relax, go with the flow. The alternative can be deadly. Coming up next on Moment of Impact. Accidents totally bizarre and unusual. Fish on the freeway. Cows on the loose. Heart stopping. Hair raising moments of terror. Plus, how do you stop a 12 ton truck with big rigs out of control? And you better know what to do when they're headed your way. Slipping and sliding, tripping and falling, skidding and skating, before, during, and after. One out of eight traffic deaths is the result of a crash with a large truck. Unfortunately, most of these accidents also involve much smaller vehicles. In some cases, the truck is clearly at fault, and the damage is terrible. But too often, it's the fault of reckless passenger cars taking foolish chances with trucks. We're a society of risk takers. Oftentimes, we feel as if we're immortal. Our car is a tank, and when we're in that car, we're invincible. Maybe he thought the truck would back out of his way. Here's another reckless move drivers make all the time. Watch the white pickup bolt for the exit at the last minute. Watch again and notice that the big rig is still braking after the pickup is halfway up the exit ramp. At 55 miles per hour, it takes a fully loaded 18-wheeler the length of a football field to stop. And the results can be horrendous. Most truck accidents are caused either by improper lane changes, a passenger car, and just taking unnecessary risks. The driver of this Thunderbird cut in front of the truck at 75 miles an hour. But driving in the blind spot is the number one offender. Amazingly, this man is unhurt when he and his car were dragged 150 yards underneath this semi. I've never seen anything like that. That guy still be alive after being run over like that? He's just lucky. His car was virtually invisible, hidden in a blind spot alongside the truck. If you can't see the mirrors of the truck, or you can't see the driver in the mirror, he can't see you. Put yourself in the driver's seat of the nation's big rigs. Imagine that you cannot stop if you're cut off. You cannot see if someone is in your blind spot. And can't do anything when you've lost control. Carelessness around big trucks won't get you there any faster. As a matter of fact, this kind of carelessness may not get you there at all. Accidents, by definition, are unexpected. But then come those moments that no driver's ed course can prepare you for. Moments that are truly bizarre. On America's roadways, anything goes, ranging from the inconvenient to the completely insane. Oh, he quit that car. Look at him slide. Unbelievable. When your commute gets turned upside down, will you be ready? Los Angeles, a pileup is caused when a truck spills its slippery cargo. Scores of fish. The last thing any motorist expects to see on the highway. In Canada, much larger game gets loose when a cattle truck rolls over. It's pandemonium as police, firemen, and good Samaritans try to round up the frightened strays and head them on back. But it seems that cows are not nearly as sure-footed on asphalt as they are on grass. But then, neither are the humans. Crossing the freeway, this cow hops out of the way and safely meanders through rush hour traffic. At last, a truck moves in to help corral the stampede. The final irony, it's a milk truck. Here in England, a news briefing is interrupted by a series of accidents. The reason for the briefing, to announce the improved safety of this highway. 
You think you can avoid accidents by staying at home. No such luck. My car is in the, it was in the garage, parked inside of the garage. Where is it now? In the, in the living room, <laughs> in the piano, and oh, what a mess. Sometimes the most unexpected part of a wreck comes during the rescue. These medics slip and slide across icy roads to get this victim to an ambulance. But the last 10 feet are the most frustrating as one by one they slip just beyond arm's reach of their goal. It could have been worse. This car actually chases its passengers down the icy street. In Scarborough, a fire-breathing firebird cruises toward oncoming traffic with no driver. In Chicago, when this Midtown bank suggested a drive through window, this isn't exactly what they had in mind. And these startled residents weren't expecting someone to drop in. And sometimes with accidents, the most bizarre thing is that no one was killed. This police camera is rolling when suddenly not one, but two vehicles slide wildly out of control, giving this man a split second to save his own life. Incredibly, he dodges clear, and his bewildered reaction is to laugh. He doesn't realize he's one of the luckiest men alive. Sometimes the only mistake you make is assuming that the other person won't make one. You approach a stoplight at a blind intersection. You assume that cross traffic will stop. You head under a low bridge and assume the semi beside you has enough clearance. You're in the left lane on the highway. You assume that the stalled vehicles will be on the right. You didn't plan an escape route in case of danger. Watch again as the first car passes safely on the left. The red car doesn't realize he's boxed in on his right until it's too late. In 20 years as a police officer, I've learned to watch for things that I never thought would go wrong. Because someday, somewhere, they will. Coming up next on Moment of Impact, gasoline and alcohol. Be a drunk driver. The deadliest combination on the road. It makes you think you can. I've had about five beers. When you really can't. And when the smoke clears and the effects wear off, the consequences of that lethal mix are a harsh and terrifying reality. They think they can dial and drive. They think they can eat and drive. But worse, they think they can drink and drive. Two out of five Americans will be involved in a drunk driving crash in their lifetime. If there's ever an accident that's avoidable, this is it. Although their behavior may seem amusing, the reality can be deadly. This is what's left of the choice to drive over the speed limit and under the influence. It appears at this time that uh, alcohol is going to be a factor in the accident. 17,000 people are killed each year in drunk driving accidents. As far as the alcohol involved, there was beer cans of Saturday in all three vehicles. Sometimes you can spot a drunk driver. They swerve, speed, and slow down when you least expect it. This guy is so drunk, he's riding on the rims of his wheels at 80 miles per hour and doesn't even know it. When you spot a drunk driver, get as far out of his way as you can. Get a license plate number and call the police. Hey, yeah, I'm found a real bad drunk driver. We don't expect you to take it as far as Dr. Lewis Greenwald. Could be a drunk driver speeding and swerving and tailgating. After a drunk driver ran his family off the road 10 years ago, Greenwald founded Drunk Busters, which urges citizens to report offenders. He's totally on the curb now. This guy's in very bad shape. He tails him at a distance until police can move in and make the arrest. By night, Greenwald has his hands full. Yeah, we need to stay police out here. I got a drunk driver and a great Cadillac. Armed with a camcorder and a cell phone, Greenwald hits the road. Usually, the police arrive on time. At other times, it's too late. He's all over the road. He, he's going to hit the meat right now. 
So far, Greenwald helped to bust more than a thousand drunk drivers. Have you been drinking tonight, sir? Yeah, a little bit. I've had about five beers. Cops making DUI stops are continually amazed at the impaired thinking of the drivers. The man claimed that his dog was the driver. And in fact, the dog was in his lap. And I didn't believe that because I asked to see the dog's license, and he didn't have one. So. Do you understand the English language? No! You do have the right to remain silent. I can't do this sober. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Now, let's do it one at a time. Am I getting through to you on this? Before an officer can test a drunk driver, he has to get them to pull over and stop. That alone can be a dangerous ordeal. This drunk driver not only fails to stop, he then tries to jump out of his vehicle. Some drivers will do anything to avoid a sobriety test. 775, she's crashed. Get on the car, get your hands up, get on the sidewalk, now! Make no mistake about it. Chasing down drunk drivers is dangerous business. Not only is the suspect loaded, so is the gun found under the front seat. Nice little weapon. In Los Angeles, a young man survives a horrific encounter with a drunk driver. I know what I went through. Uh, I know what my family went through. And I just don't want that to happen to anybody else. In this tragic incident, a drunk driver plowed into the back of this Nissan at 70 miles per hour. The force of the impact buckled the doors and ignited the gas tank, trapping the people inside. In spite of the intense heat, an officer rushes into the flames and smashes the window to free the passenger. The man who escaped is severely burned over a third of his body. My parents, they got to the burn unit, and they were up there, and they saw, which was me at the time, who was burned and charred beyond recognition, and my mom didn't know that it was me. The intoxicated woman who crashed into the back of the car is three times over the legal limit. You never think this is going to happen to you. It's the farthest thing from your mind. You see it on TV and you hear about it, but you don't, you don't think it's going to happen. The drunk driver is still too drunk to comprehend what she did. She will, however, have to live with the consequences of her actions for the rest of her life. I'm grateful they did go out and knock out the window. I mean, if, if you hadn't done that, uh... I wouldn't be here. Drunk driving accidents can be avoided. If you think a drunk is nearby, expect the unexpected and drive defensively. And of course, the best defense is to drive sober yourself. There's a moving target out on the street, and it could be you. Without knowing it, you've just fallen victim to the fastest growing scam in America, a $20 billion a year crime wave known as auto insurance fraud. It starts with a car accident. Looks like a simple fender bender, but in reality, it's a premeditated crime that often goes undetected. Basically, it's the hunter and the hunted. Stage accidents. This is called a swoop and squat, and it takes two cars to make it work. Here's how it goes down. You maneuver the car that you want to be hit in front of one. And then you let the car ride along so she'll get used to the car in front of her and not pay it any attention. That's when the swoop car cuts right in front of both of you. The blue car slams on his brakes. You're caught off guard. As for the driver who swooped in front, he guns the gas and beats it out of there. And you're left to deal with the bad guys. What makes the thing really lucrative are your lawyers and your doctors. That's where you get your money. Sometimes these faked accidents go too far, and it's the con artists themselves who get hurt. In Los Angeles, a squat car slammed on its brakes in front of a big rig. The rig jackknifed, flipped over, and crushed the car. The truck driver was extremely traumatized over what had happened because I don't believe he realized that they set him up. The driver of the squat car was trapped, but alive. He thought he'd walk away with a pocket full of cash. Instead, he went to the hospital and then on to jail. Trying to avoid uh, being placed in a situation by keeping your distance from the car in front of you, give yourself an out. Give yourself an out. There is a growing multi-million dollar business in this country today. Studying auto accidents. 
Each year, thousands of lives are lost. Millions of dollars in damages are caused by traffic accidents. It's up to the men and women in this growing field to ask the tough questions. When can an accident be avoided? When does a millisecond save a life? And when is close, too close? Crash test dummies volunteer their lives so that we may learn about hazards on the road. Our hats go off to the accident researchers who study the nature of human error and the wreckage it can cause on the highway. Their job is to make the road safer for all of us. When you're driving a car, are you really driving it? Is that where your focus is? Or are you really doing something else? Whenever you look away from the road, disaster can strike. Watch again. The man in this car later told police he was tuning his radio. By the time he saw the stopped cars, it was too late. It's bad enough when people drink and drive, but what about when they eat and drive? Or put on makeup and drive? Or even read and drive? Does this look familiar? How about this? In the seconds it takes them to make that phone call or unfold that map, these people might as well be blindfolded. When you're driving, anything can be a distraction. Here, it's a routine pullover. Keep your eye on the backed up traffic in the center lane. This looky-loo has learned the hard way. Split seconds of valuable reaction time are lost whenever you take your eyes off the road. If you don't pay attention, you could pay the price. Coming up next on Moment of Impact, Accidents waiting to happen. When criminals run from the law. Also, raging rivers, flash floods, thin ice, plus the awesome power of trains. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. When the train can't stop, when the water keeps rising, when the criminals start running, how safe will you be? Water. Nothing is immune to its deadly force. Raging flash floods, torrential rains, flimsy guardrails, slippery bridges, and suddenly your vehicle is out of control. Ignore the signs and sometimes it's only a matter of seconds before it's all over. Suddenly, you're underwater. Trapped in a flood-swollen river, a woman pleads for help. Rescue is on the way. Bystanders scream as a car is swept 100 yards away before rescuers are finally able to save her. Not even a guardrail could stop this car from careening into the canal. The three occupants, lucky to be alive. These water rescues are more common than you think. Vehicles end up in the water more than 11,000 times a year. So what would you do if it happened to you? If your car plunges into the water, you can save your own life if you do the right thing at the right time. The Metro-Dade Scuba Recovery Unit allowed us to film this dangerous and life-threatening drill. The first thing you need to do when your car goes into the water is you need to stay calm. The driver and the passenger in this car are rescue workers in an intensive training program. The worst case scenario where you've actually gone down with the car, and now the water's totally engulfed the car. First thing you want to do is get out of your seatbelt. You can move around the car pretty freely. The best thing to do is get out a window, but a window, if it's electric, it may not work, you're gonna have to break a window out. The only window that you just can't break is the windshield. And all the rest of the windows are made of safety glass, and when you crash them or break them or hit them with something hard and sharp, they're gonna shatter completely. If your car is submerged in water, it may not be possible to open the door. Most important, don't panic. It can mean the difference between life and death. And if the car starts to go under, Remember, it's the engine that sinks first. Just climb into the back seat and from there get out a rear window. If you stay calm and know what to do, your chances of survival are greatly improved. 
Of all the circumstances that can lead to an accident, there's one that almost guarantees it, running from the law. Hey, 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 hey. Ah! This Las Vegas felon has stolen a car and robbed a convenience store. But his gamble to run doesn't pay off. A fleeing car is a ticking bomb. And there's no telling how much time is left. These felons hop out of the burning car and right into the waiting arms of the law. This robber figured he had nothing to lose by running. He was wrong. As this chopper's infrared camera shows, his desperate final move gets cut short. And so does this light pole. He's lucky to escape with his life. The young drivers in this stolen Jeep lead Georgia police on a high-speed joyride. To them, it's a big joke. Just get around these trucks, and they'll have the last laugh on the stranded police. But the Jeep hits the guardrail, slices across the highway, then swerves back into the rail. And suddenly, the party is over. This is the price these kids have to pay. Incredibly, the truckers were able to avoid an even worse accident. Because the lucky ones who happen to survive a pursuit still must answer for the property they destroy. Watch again as this bank robber not only gets caught, but demolishes a line of parked cars. There are steps you can take to avoid being the innocent victim caught in the middle of a pursuit. By the time you hear the siren of a pursuit, the danger may be closer than you think. Don't make sudden moves. Get to the side of the road gradually. Do be prepared to stop at intersections, even when your light is green. And don't ever underestimate the lengths to which a fleeing felon will go. This is why police will risk running a suspect off the road, rather than waiting until he slams into an innocent motorist. The simple fact is this. A fleeing suspect has already declared his own life expendable. If cops can save everyone else on the road, it's a victory. No matter what you've done, don't make things worse by running. At best, it's another line on your criminal record. At worst, it's an epitaph on your grave. Trains. We never even think about them until we hear that clanging bell. And then it's too late. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, a collision occurs at a train crossing every 90 minutes. Unfortunately, often fatal. The ironic thing is, no other vehicle is so easy for you to avoid, or so deadly when you don't. This car is stalled on the tracks. The driver pleads for someone to alert the railroad. The call is made, but the 4,000-ton train can't get stopped in time. Her brand new Cadillac gets pulverized. This is all that remains of her prized possession. But most of these accidents are completely avoidable. He apparently did not like the fact that the arm was down. He drove around, and he was struck by a northbound train. Even the mighty semi is no match for the monstrous train. An amateur cameraman was rolling tape when a semi started across the train tracks before the other side was clear. Backed up traffic could only watch as the driver narrowly escaped from the cab of the truck. The rules are simple. Don't try to beat a train. Do stop at every crossing, whether you see a train or not. And don't ever ignore those flashing lights. Coming up next, on Moment of Impact, Road rage. Too many cars. Too many tempers. Get out of the way! Too many deaths. I'll put a bullet head! If you've ever gotten angry at another driver, you need to see this. It happened in a flash. Tempers flare. The hell are you doing? Escalating out of control before it's too late, before it happens to you. Come on! Learn how to stop. 
Some drivers just don't get it. They think the rules don't apply to them. They deliberately ignore every warning sign and race ahead with a recklessness that's almost suicidal. You better get me some assistance up here ASAP. Broad Albin, New York, the dead of winter. What you see next is a terrible warning. Right, what do we got? Oh, I don't know if there's anybody under there or not. Oh. A tanker truck has collided with a now unrecognizable sedan. There's got to be somebody in here. Moments earlier, the driver of the car had run a stop sign. Okay, we're not a body. It wasn't the first time. The man had been ticketed for failure to stop three times before. And he just he blew never, the stop sign. Never slowed down. Today, it cost him his life. He leaves behind a wife and an 11-year-old daughter. You know, you never get used to seeing this kind of destruction. Reminds you how fragile life is. The next time you're tempted to run a stop sign, remember what happened to the man who made a habit of it. There's an epidemic on our roads today. Every year, thousands die needlessly as people lose control, not of their cars, but of their emotions. It's not just anger, it's rage, road rage. South Florida, a passing cameraman catches two enraged men out for blood after a minor fender bender. The man's wife pleads with him to stop but he opens the trunk to get a crowbar. The man with the baseball bat gets his pepper spray. Swinging wildly, the man is soon repelled by the spray and throws the crowbar. The man's wife has had enough. She takes their child to safety as he gets ready to drive off. Dr. Arnold Nuremberg, recognized as America's road rage therapist. Within the human psyche is an urge to release our aggression on an anonymous other when we feel justified. That driver strictly defined by, he did something bad to me, I'm gonna teach him a lesson and get him. Just give me an excuse, you know, as Clint Eastwood said, make my day. That dynamic expresses itself in warfare. We're killing people we don't know, we feel justified. It expresses itself in road rage as well. Somebody cuts you off or goes too slow in the fast lane. Come on, get out of the way! You wanna pay him back. You wanna teach him a lesson about how to really drive. So you ride their bumper. Maybe flash your brights. They slam on their brakes or flip you an obscene gesture. Here, a raging dispute brings five lanes of highway traffic to a standstill. When neither side will back down, things can quickly spiral out of control. It doesn't take much for a confrontation to end like this. When people get behind the wheel of a car, they act stupid. They do things that in that car they would never do if they're home. When we get behind the car, some demon takes over. New York City. We've arranged to ride with a self-admitted rageaholic. This is Michael Simon, age 37. He suffers from anger management problems. Come on! Go! Michael allowed us to install hidden cameras in his car to observe his behavior. Come on! We've arranged for him to call Dr. Nuremberg in case he loses control. Come on! Right now, he's trying to cross Midtown Manhattan to get to a part-time job. Already running late, Michael starts driving aggressively. Watch what happens when he tries to get into his left lane. A cab barrels up on his left, then suddenly stops. Idiot! A close call. What the hell are you doing? Michael's type of impatience gets people hurt every day. In Miami, the driver of this car became a victim of his own road rage and nearly died on this two-lane road. He lost his patience, uh, got angry, started passing on the left. There was an oncoming vehicle coming southbound. He swerved right back in front of me real quick, you know, like making a point that he passed me. Instead, he lost control and swerved into these trees. A very dominant individual would rather risk his or her life than feel they're gonna back down. Back in New York, Michael faces a new obstacle, the construction oh. zone. This is, you can't do this at night. You gotta do it now, when everybody's rushing. The cement mixer is moved, but now a red van blocks the way. People start honking, and nobody is angrier than Michael. Move it! What's this idiot doing? Move him out! Oh, God. You got this guy, stop! Will you, you look, you don't get a bullet in your head, man. You think I'm kidding with you? I'll put a bullet in your head! Michael is ready to explode with anger. Instead, he parks and calls Dr. Nuremberg. 
Remember, he's the therapist we've arranged to be there for Michael in case of emergency. Dr. Nuremberg, hi, this is Michael Simon. I'm sorry to bother you. What are you, what, what are you angry about right now, Michael? You sound very agitated. Yeah, because this guy's disrespecting me. And he's like, got it on for me, and he's got me sitting over here, and he won't let me go. Yeah. yeah. He shouldn't be. You, 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 how, how, old, how old are you now? Michael, Michael, how old are you now? I'm 37. 37. And you've been angry all your life, right? Yeah. You have a short fuse, don't you, Michael? Yeah, I really do. I, I know you have a short fuse, uh, but you're tired of getting like that, right? Am I right or wrong, Michael? You want to calm down, isn't that true? Within minutes of speaking to the doctor, Michael's fury is ebbed. Fortunately, he was able to catch himself in time. Road rage can happen to anybody. Silmar, California. An angry woman chases a van down this off-ramp, taunting it, ramming it repeatedly. Then, unbelievably, she goes up the off-ramp. When they turn around and enter the freeway, the speed was about 45 or 50 miles an hour. She crashes head on into an oncoming truck, killing herself and her passenger instantly. All this only minutes after dropping her nine-year-old grandson off at school. With road rage incidents climbing 7% every year, how do you keep from becoming a victim? You want to avoid eye contact. If you stop for 10 minutes, you want to pull up to a police station because you're in danger. Honking your horn, tailgating and obscene gestures have gotten people killed in every state of the union. If somebody's done something to you in a road rage incident, you just go on like it didn't happen. Lawsuits, injuries, even death. Before you react, tell yourself it's just not worth it. Because no matter how in the right you think you are, you could end up dead right. Each year, thousands are injured in traffic accidents. Why is the toll so high? Are we just being too careless when we drive? Or before we drive? Due to the fact that he was not wearing a seatbelt, he was ejected onto the pavement. The driver was transported to the hospital with major injuries. Seatbelts. Test after test shows the danger of not wearing them. How effective are they? This GMC clipped the bumper of this gray sedan and flipped into oncoming traffic. Amazing, spectacular crash. The children were all in car safety seats. The adults were all in seat belts, lap and shoulder, and everybody walked away from this basically uninjured. Buckling up is easy and effective. Don't rely on the airbag to save you. If it fails, you've got only a steering column in front of you. Seat belts do save lives. If you don't believe it, here it is. It's right here. Coming up next on Moment of Impact, the one thing that spells the difference between life and death on the road. After the dust settles, the one common thread that could be said about every crash, the one factor you do have complete control over, the one thing that ties all accidents together is speed. As speed increases, so does the danger. How fast was this driver going to shear his car down the center through the guardrail? How fast do you have to drive to split your car in two? How fast do you need to go to destroy your life and the lives of others? The driver of the black car up ahead couldn't wait to get through this intersection. How much time would he really have saved? The driver of this truck speeds down the freeway off-ramp. Is speeding worth the risk? Is one minute worth your life? When you gamble with speed, the only thing you might win is a quick death. This isn't a contest. It isn't a game. It's not about who's first or who's fast. It's not about who's right or showing somebody who's wrong. It's about who gets there and who doesn't. It's about who's alert, who's thinking ahead, who's willing to trade a few seconds for a chance to live. Drive smart, get there alive.